I have just heard in the last hour of the passing of Tam Dalyell. Tam Dalyell was a legend in the labour movement and a legend in the House of Commons. I served with him for decades in the House of Commons and for years before I entered it and indeed after I left it. Tam Dalyell made a conscious decision to join the labour movement. He was in fact a blue-blooded aristocrat who lived in a castle given to his ancestor in centuries past for ferocious service as a soldier in the office of the crown. Tam Diel decided to side with the working class communities of West Lothian, including the coal mining communities around Blackburn, West Lothian. And that was one of the reasons why Tam achieved legendary status during the great miner strike of 1984-85. He stood alongside the mining community and he pursued the hammer of Britain's miners, Margaret Thatcher, for decades. Not just for the way that she treated the miners, but the conduct of the Falklands War. His pursuit of Mrs Thatcher led to him several times being thrown out of the chamber and I saw it happening. I knew that it was going to happen because Tam would never back down from his repeated assertion that Mrs Thatcher had lied about the course of the Argentine ship, the Belgrano. He knew and said so that she lied about the policing of the minor strike and he collaborated closely with my friend Seamus Milne in his epic book, The Enemy Within, about that minor strike, which should be read by all of you. Tam Diel was a man who got fixed on causes and issues. Early, earlier than anybody else, he fixed on the anguish, the agony, the dreadful death toll in Iraq, as a result of sanctions after the first Gulf War, and I worked closely with him on that. If Tam took up your cause, if Tam adopted your principles, you could be certain that everyone would know about it and that he would never, ever waver. He was a fantastically generous person. I remember once I scored a half-decent goal against the Blackburn miners at a Labour Party fete in his constituency that he organised. Afterwards, Tam said in his uh, tremendous, unrepeatable, sonorous voice, George, I haven't seen a left foot like that since Puskas. You may say that that makes him a master of the overstatement. And certainly it's true that Tam's fixations could sometimes be wrong, or at least in my opinion. I opposed him in his long campaign, culminating in the West Lothian question, to scupper Scottish devolution. Mind you, I believed that home rule for Scotland would forestall, preclude, obviate the breakup of Britain and the separation of Scotland. Tam believed it was a motorway to separation with no exit ramp. History will tell whether Tam was right or whether I was about that. I'm extremely sad to hear the news because I can still see Tam bobbing up and down in his seat in the House of Commons, harrying ministers with short forensic questions often questions for which there was only a yes or a no could be the answer. He was a supreme parliamentarian. He was a fantastic family man. His now widow, Kathleen, was the daughter of the late and great John Wheatley, one of the finest men who ever wore the Labour colours in Labour history and the history of Scotland and my condolences go to her and all of Tam's family. They should take some consolation from the fact 
the all over Britain, Palestine, Iraq, indeed all around the world, people will receive the news of the passing of the father of the House of Commons, Tam Diel, with sadness and with respect. Tam, I hope that you're now in heaven with Tony Benn, your great friend. May God rest you and may you rest in peace.